Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. I am Dr. Ram. In today's discussion, we are going to see the modern view of respiratory control. I would advise all of you to watch the neural control of regulation first and then come back to this lecture. In this lecture, there are some upgradations and recent studies which have changed the view of respiratory control, especially the neural part. Let's see what are the new changes. So basically, we are going to see the DRG and VRG that is our dorsal respiratory group and ventral respiratory group and their individual divisions which we did not see previously and the present role of pons in respiratory control as well as something called a central pattern generator. Now the concept of respiratory control is given by this central pattern generator which is beautifully given by a model that is emergent property model. We are going to cover the lecture under these topics. Now coming to the DRG and VRG neurons. First let's try to understand the DRG. What was our DRG? DRG was dorsal group of neurons. So obviously the location of DRG is in the dorsal medulla. And what is the major component of it? It is located in the nucleus tractus solitarius. Then what is the dominant activity? We knew that the dominant activity of DRG is inspiration that is inspiratory group of neurons. Then what are the inputs to it? The inputs to it are the cranial nerve 9 as well as 10. Then from this DRG, what is the major output? Obviously it has, go to the, has to go to the respiratory muscles, especially the inspiratory muscles. So through the premotor neuron, it goes to the primary muscles of inspiration. Now coming to a very important point, that is it is giving interneurons to the VRG. This is very very important because we saw VRG does not normally function. Usually the inspiratory control is by the DRG and the expiratory is a passive process. But whenever there is an excess inspiratory drive, for example, a person is exercising. So what will happen is from this DRG, there is a spill of inspiratory signals to the VRG. Telling the VRG that now more and more inspiration is going on. So you have to help in the expiratory process also. We have to fasten the expiratory process also. Otherwise, only inspiration will be fast and expiration will be slow, which is not good for us. Now, coming to the VRG neurons. In VRG, there are three divisions. That is the rostral VRG, intermediate VRG, as well as the caudal VRG. That is the last part of VRG. This VRG is located between the dorsal and ventral surface of medulla. So, what is the major component of rostral VRG? It has some nucleus called as nucleus retrofacialis and Bordzinger complex. What is its major function? Its major function is expiratory function. So this gives not only the neurons to the back to the DRG, but also it gives the neurons to the caudal respiratory group of VRG also. So coming to the intermediate group, the intermediate group has our pre-Bordzinger complex. What is the importance of this pre-Bordzinger complex? Yes, this is called as the rhythm generator or the pacemaker of respiration. But in some time, we will try to understand that it is not the only the pre bordzinger complex which is contributing to the generation of rhythm. Then it has another nucleus called as nucleus ambiguous and nucleus paraambiguous. What is the overall function of this region? The overall function of this region is inspiratory control. So it sends impulse via the motor neurons to the accessory muscles of inspiration. Now we can understand it is taking help of both the primary muscles as well as the axillary muscles because it takes up these conditions in case of exercise where the person needs more and more energy to breathe faster. And via the premotor neurons also, it sends impulse to the primary as well as axillary muscles of inspiration. Now coming to the last part that is our caudal part of VRG. Here we have a nucleus called as nucleus retroambiguous. This nucleus retroambiguous is similar to that of the rostral part. It is also helping in expiration. And it also sends its neuron through the premotor neurons to the spinal cord and it helps in accessory muscles of expiration. So basically VRG is involved in helping the accessory muscles of both inspiration as well as expiration. So whenever the need is more, the VRG kicks in and it helps in active inspiration as well as expiration. Now let's try to understand what is the change in apneustic as well as pneumotaxic center. The present study says the exact location of these centers like both apneustic as well as pneumotaxic is only of historical significance. Still most of the examiners like to ask what is their functions but the exact location of these centers are in a controversy in the current studies. And 
the apneustic center is not specific center it is usually distributed throughout the caudal pons suppose in last session we were seeing that is the apneustic center was located here but now they say that they are distributed over a wide region and many small small neurons are contributing to the function of apneusis and in a similar manner the pneumotaxic center also is distributed diffusely and not only that it is not unique in preventing apneusis this center alone is not unique in preventing apneusis and they say that lesions outside the pneumotaxic center can also cause apneusis so the concept of particular apneustic center and pneumotaxic center is no more valid with this we are going to study what is the newer pattern generator that is our central pattern generator this central pattern generator concept came into play because they found that no individual region in both the drg as well as the vrg is not sufficient to produce a rhythm that is seen in humans so they are saying that it is the group of neurons which are involved in the inspiratory and expiratory control out of this they have named this group one group of neurons as central inspiratory activity as the name indicates these are group of neurons will generate the inspiratory ramp so basically they are going to generate the inspiratory ramp and from them where it is going to go it is going to go to the motor neural pool to the spinal cord and from there it is going to innervate the muscles of respiration in the lungs now what will happen is they will send their vagal efferents to a particular place called as integrator neuron what is this integrator neuron this integrator neuron will integrate information from everywhere and control the inspiratory ramps how does it control basically they are going to take impulses from the cortical cells that is the cortical region of the brain and npbm this is nucleus parabrachialis medialis it is nothing but our older pneumotaxic center and medullary inhibitory neurons from all these places it will take input and finally they will converge to a place called inspiratory off switch the name itself is the inspiratory off switch so this can switch off the inspiration so basically the inspiratory rhythm that is generated by the central inspiratory activity can be switched off but this should be considered from all these regions so that is the central pattern generator or which is commonly called as emergent property model so i would advise all the mbbs students to mention this central pattern generator in the neural control of regulation or when the regulation of respiration is asked this will give a good impact on your marks i hope it's clear thank you for listening we'll see in the next video thank you